if we want relatively orderly uh, migration patterns, which is good for everybody, it's good for our culture, it's good for our economy, it's good for our politics, you have to make it legal for people to be able to move and show up and pay taxes. We're in the middle of, of a historic Western Hemisphere creation of refugees, particularly from Venezuela. The numbers are staggering, like 8 million mm -hmm. people. Uh, reflect on that a little bit. How does that, uh, wh where, where do you think we are as a country in understanding or even uh, like thinking about America's role as a refugee application center? I think that uh, first and foremost, you need to understand Biden's action is purely politics. And we have reverted back to the great American tradition of scapegoating immigrants when we're unhappy with how things seem to be going in our daily lives. Um, people don't really make a big distinction between people who are refugees and asylees and then people who are coming here to live a better life. Um, and when things start to get dicey, uh, immigrants, uh, particularly when they're pouring over a southern border, which is incredibly poorly managed, uh, you know, this this is the way things go uh, and have always gone in American history. Um, so in that sense, we've reverted back to a kind of standard American trope that immigrants are coming here to steal American prosperity exactly at the moment when it is disappearing from all of us. So kudos, Joe Biden, you've never been more American in telling people who are desperate to come here to escape poverty and political uh, problems, you know, that they're not welcome. Uh, so you have that. To go back to 1980, uh, Matt, you never uh, cease to uh, remind us of this, which I think is really important. The greatest thing in the 1980, you know, kind of Reagan campaign is the primary debate between uh, Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush, where they had a debate about immigration in Houston. Uh, before either had clinched the nomination. Um, and what they do is they are arguing and outbidding each other on what they will do to make illegal immigrants more acceptable in America, to give them legal status, to give them more access to the American dream, because they each agree and literally say something almost exactly like this, that we know that illegal immigrants are a major part of the fabric of America and we should be welcoming, welcoming them into our world where they can live and work peacefully and profitably and add to general prosperity. Uh, we are so far from that world where the Republican Party now, there is not a single major Republican who will openly say, I am in favor of more legal immigration. Uh, you know, and it's easy. You can just say, we need to secure the border. There's something wrong when, you know, when our border checkpoints are not working anymore. Uh, but I am in favor of more legal immigration. Increasingly, there are no uh, national Democrats who will say we need to fix the legal immigration system and make it easier for more people to come here regardless of circumstance and we need to secure the border. So I think going back to 1980 is a good place to start because fundamentally we need to get back to a place where we recognize that immigration is not going away. Immigration is not primarily a function of America. It's a function of how fucked up the rest of the world is. And we've spent a lot of time fucking up the rest of the world. Um, we need to uh, get to a place where we uh, you know, where we play the historic role that we've had, uh, which even if we're scapegoating immigrants, we're actually allowing more and more of them to come in here and to help us become, uh, you know, the, the country that we've always been. Peter, um, one of the snap polls taken uh, since this action has it polling at around 70 percent of public approval. I cannot think of the last time Joe Biden did anything. Um, that polled at around 70%. What do you say to the people who point at that and say, scoreboard, it worked? Well, if if it worked is, uh, you can say it worked if your goal, if worked, the definition of worked is uh, it was politically popular a couple of days later. But it worked <laughs> is not the same as, uh, like that's not the same, or it, it was politically popular a couple of days later, is not the same as saying, well, look, the border situation is in fact under control here. And Biden knows this. This is completely and purely a political play in an election year, and that's all that this is. 
And so, you know, uh, as Catherine mentioned, this was done on the basis of the same law that Trump used to impose his Muslim ban, which Biden, of course, was against. And I went back and I looked at the remarks that Biden gave uh, eight years after uh, bu- uh, the, the Trump immigration ban was first proposed. And I just want to read them to you. And I'll admit, I'm going to very slightly edit them, but only very slightly. So on this day, eight years ago, candidate for president Donald Trump proposed his Muslim travel ban. Like millions of Americans, I was appalled. The proposal was a cynical ploy. It was about sowing fear and distrust, not about protecting national security. And it betrayed America's long history of welcoming people. Like, that's, that's this. That's this again. He's using the same law to do the same thing. Not okay. not exactly the same thing, but but he's using the same law to do a similar thing for similar political reasons. And if it is popular uh, one week later, that doesn't mean that anything is fixed. That doesn't mean that this is going to work. That doesn't mean that it's a good idea. Hey, Matt. Uh, Yeah. Can I read you a quote from Nick Kristoff? Oh, yeah. 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 I know. I know you love that. Um, Oh, here's his column uh, today. Are we, the people of an immigrant nation, pulling up the ladder after we have boarded? Yes, to some degree. But the reality is that we can't (laughs) absorb everyone who wants in, and it's better that the ladder be raised in an orderly way by reasonable people. I said it's a metaphor question because I totally get it. That's yeah, fine. the metaphor is fine. The lad- It's all the same ladder in the metaphor. So the metaphor yeah. is not mixed. Um, but the sentiment is atrocious. Uh, the idea that it's he he's just saying out loud, it's OK if our guy does it. It's bad if your guy does it. Uh, this is like all over the place right now. It's just like Democrats and moderates who, you know, have felt that our policy toward immigrants is, you know, in some way lacking and inhumane uh, have just like turned on a dime because what matters is who wins the election. I think the poll that shows um, people currently support the Biden policy should be contextualized uh, with the polls that showed uh, all time highs for support for both uh, immigration and free trade during the Trump administration. Um, Maybe just maybe those polls are not really about the underlying policy issues. Um, it is interesting. Uh, in 1995, uh, Gallup has been asking, is immigration generally a good thing or a bad thing for a long time? Uh, the recent high, and I don't know if 1995 counts as recent, it's increasingly, it seems just like yesterday to me, but um, 65% of uh, Americans wanted the, uh, the amount of immigration decreased uh, to the country. And and Matt, uh, I know you've written a lot about this. That was a big part of Bill Clinton's reelection campaign. He spent more time jawboning about uh, not just uh, stopping illegal immigration, but deporting existing illegal immigrants in America back to their home countries and got standing uh, ovations for that kind of thing. Uh, we're now at 41 percent of Americans, according to Gallup, wanting to decrease the level of legal immigration, which is since then basically the high. So there is a widespread perception that immigration is somehow adding to the chaos of the country. I think we all agree. I mean, I know we all agree that that's, that's you know, bad consciousness on the part of Americans and things like that. But it is a political reality, and Biden is bowing to it. What are we doing to increase legal immigration? And if you look at the you know, the relevant numbers, we are not increasing the vastly, if at all, the number of people who can get green cards, who can come live and work here legally. Um, a lot of other uh, visas, temporary visas or special visas and things like that also have not been increased. And it's, you know, it, it's it's kind of an iron law of reality that co- uh, countries don't really control borders. To certain degrees, they can. And if you want to be totalitarian or authoritarian about it, you can. But in general, ebbs and flows of people moving to different places is dictated by large forces that have a lot to do with problems over there and prosperity here and things and the relative merits of that. What we can do if we want relatively orderly uh, migration patterns, which is good for everybody, it's good for our culture, it's good for our economy, it's good for our politics, you have to make it legal for people to be able to move and show up and pay taxes. Um, and we're just not doing that because everybody's now focused on the footage footage around the border. That's not where 
the issue is. Like that's never going to be solved anytime soon, particularly with situations like the one you have in Venezuela, which is an ongoing, you know, destruction of a country over decades now. People aren't going to stop leaving Venezuela and coming to America anytime soon. What we can do is process them in their home countries. Uh, you know, you can you can apply and get TSA pre in a fucking Staples in America. We can process people in their home countries and vet them before they come over here, right? And then the other thing I'll say, and this was a real uh, guaranteed applause getter at the uh, free press uh, fire debate on immigration. I participated in a couple months ago in Dallas, you know, we can build a wall around the welfare state, not the United States. That's the thing. Let's do that. Let's make things more legal and more open, make it easier to identify who's coming here, give them the proper papers, put them in the system. And ev literally everybody wins. You know, the only people who lose are people from, you know, people like Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela. Uh, and I think we can all we can sleep easy at, you know, knowing that authoritarians and tyrants are losing productive, forward looking citizens. That was a clip from the latest Reason Roundtable. If you want to see more clips, go here. If you want to see the whole episode, go here. Make sure to subscribe at Reason's YouTube channel or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening, watching or both.